get them up and running with us also. And we'll have our whole family with us all around the world and right here doing this work. I want you to join with me again tonight, please. Please. On the highway with Chad. All right. Well, it's going to be a beautiful sunset tonight, brother. Hope you guys are somewhere where you get a big steak or a nice enchilada. <laughs> I want you to join with me tonight, like we do on a regular basis. Um, and I want us to make our confession again. Now, um, I have been led by the Father to do this very specifically. Because in the process of doing this, I, by the presence of God and the wisdom of God, I am able to help every one of us get this word spoken deep inside of our heart so that we will um, truly no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine at all, and we'll, we will truly be able to speak the word of God and, and watch God move in our life. Now, let me just get a couple more clicks here. We're going to the uh, Zoom screen. Going to that screen. We're going to that screen. We're going to that screen. All right, and I want to encourage all of you. If the latest update from um, your favorite app that you use doesn't work, don't cuss. Now, I, I don't know if you caught the, the real depth of uh, what it was I was saying there. If, if, if your favorite app that you use doesn't work, um, don't cut. <laughs> Just deal with the devil. That's behind it because um, that's what's going on. We have an enemy that's trying to stop us from being what we are. Now, um, tonight I need to go straight to the specific verses that God is speaking for me to go to tonight. So um, even though I love to do the uh, word of God and, and the Pledge of Allegiance and all that, I've got to get straight to the word of God. Isn't that just something? Here we go. Let's make this opening prayer together. Now, uh, please realize that God gave me this opening prayer, not only as a way for all of us to pray together, but also a way to instruct us and to train us. I want you to think, all of these words through that we're praying. These are all, every one of these words have been thought over and prayed over. They are not the word of God, meaning that this is first, this is third Samuel of 2022, chapter one, verse number two. This is an instruction from God to pray. We will continually fine-tune this as the Father gives us greater understanding. Pray it with me. Father, we pray this prayer and make this declaration as your children, the heirs of God. Say it. I am literally an heir of God. I am literally an heir of an God. An heir of God. 
as the body of Christ filled with the fullness of God. As ministers of reconciliation. As ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Pause. Every single one of us must learn the power of every one of those lines. It is in written form in front of your eyes for you to see. This isn't just something cute that Pastor Sam does. I want you to understand you are a child of God and heir. I want you to understand that you are literally the body of Christ filled with the fullness of God. I, The Holy Spirit has given me a mandate that you will learn you are a minister of reconciliation. You are an ambassador, a literal governing body of authority representative. Our kingdom, heaven, has sent you to earth here, and you are a governmental authority leader of our kingdom on this earth. And it's all done by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now watch. This is so important to see. This is so diligently vital for you in this day. The enemy is doing everything in its power, even though it's crushed, to cause you to not think about those things, the very first thing in your mind. I am an heir of God. Shut up, devil. I am the body of Christ. Crush you, devil. I have the fullness of God on the inside of me. You shut up, devil. I am a minister of reconciliation. I bring people back to the kingdom of God every day, wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing. As ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. See, this isn't just a cute thing for us to say. This is our battle cry. This is what makes you the warrior of God filled with the compassion of Jesus. And yet with your, with your sword of the spirit in the enemy's face saying, No, you get out of my life right now. And then drive every bit of the enemy out of your life. The enemy, not our God, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't worry. This is going to be a preach, speak word that's going to come hard, fast, and continuously for the next 40 minutes because it's where we are right now tonight. Say it with me. We, the community of faith, second paragraph, declare. Thank you, Father, that you have filled us with your Holy Spirit. Flow, Holy Spirit, flow. Do it, Jesus, with your presence and power in our lives. I, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak it right here, right now, tonight. That every single one of us will gather ourselves and come to this revelation on the inside. So that we're fighting from the inside out every enemy in our lives. Third paragraph. We receive your guidance through this time of ministry that believers' lives will be changed forever, pause, by the word of God and that glory and honor may be brought to your kingdom through our influence today 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Just keep right on going. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. Brother Chris in Luther, Michigan. Brother Dave and Brother Chad running around North Dakota. Mary and, and uh, uh, Sunday and, and uh, Rebecca in Michigan. Brother Dan, I don't even know where he is tonight, but he's out there running around the world somewhere. God bless you, Dan, wherever you are. And me in North Dakota. And 39 nations of the world, wherever you are, there's a commanded blessing of unity because we're standing together. It's like the precious anointing oil running down on the edge of Aaron's garment. I want you to just pause and do this with me. Just lift your hands and say, I receive the anointing of Jesus Christ flowing on my body, inside of me, flowing up out of me right now. Right now, I, I receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the manifest presence of God in my life. Verse two, it's the precious oil. Running down on the edge of gar Aaron's garment means it goes all over you. It's like the dew of Hermon descending on the mountains of Zion saturates everything. For there, the and the brethren dwelling together in unity. The Lord commands the blessing, life forevermore. Let's keep right on and going. As Jesus said, we agree for the victory. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. These are not just something to fill the time. Get this verse deep inside your soul. Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, meaning the Father, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Thank you, Father, for your presence that's in the midst of us. Let's keep moving. Father, we pray over the body of Christ that's right here in the community of faith. We come from all denominations all backgrounds of life. We come from all different backgrounds of work and labor and industry and high level finances and even those that are just broke. There is one body and one spirit, just as we were called in one hope of our call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in us all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, how did God decide to work on this earth? Kathy said, Sadati, welcome. Felicia Eicher, welcome. God bless you, brother. Dave's, uh, that's uh, Missouri's here. Alabama's here. Awesome. Glory be to God. God chose to work through the fivefold ministry and the body. And Jesus, say it right out loud with me. You got to say it out loud. Jesus himself gave some to be apostles some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of 
the saints. I'm here equipping you right now for the work of the ministry. For the edifying, that word means jumpstart, like a dead battery hooked to a live battery. For that jumpstarting of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ, say it with me, who lives inside of me. That take the we out and make it personal. That I may be filled, Jesus, with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 19. And now verse Ephesians 4, 14, so that we will no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. There is the answer for this day. Pause. Verse 14. Will no longer be children. What Paul said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. I will not be driven and tossed another day by every wind of doctrine. What does this Bible teach? I'm going to open it up. I'm going to read it for myself. And I am not going to call any man a liar. I'm not going to point my finger. I'm going to believe the Bible. Because this says, the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Say it with me. I am growing up. In all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, Joined and knit together by that which every joint supplies causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I bring my gift and my supply to this body of believers today. Use me to be a blessing to others in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God for the World War II vets, the Korea veterans, the Vietnam vets, every veteran since then. I'm, I'm going to not, there's impossible for me to name all of the actions, so I'm going to forget somebody. I'm going to say one. All of those men that fought in Serbia, and nobody remembers them. We join the voices of every great prayer warrior, patriot warrior, passionate patriot of this great nation. And we declare, God bless America. May God bless America. As we the people, united we stand. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now our prayer of dedication. Father, help us the living to be dedicated to the unfinished work which these fought for and so nobly advanced. Help us be dedicated to the great task that remains before us, that from these honored fallen, we take increased devotion 
to the cause for which they gave that last full measure of devotion. We highly resolve that these shall not have fallen in vain. This is Memorial Day week. Honoring the fallen. They've not fallen in vain. We declare this nation under God is experiencing a new birth of freedom right here, right now, today. We declare this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Long will our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us, Lord, by thy great might. Great God, our King. Forgive us of our sin, Lord, and heal our land. We seek your face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Now, let me pause this. Mary was asking before the program began about studying the Bible. Now, I want everyone that is with me tonight. I want you to get out a piece of paper. I want you to get a notebook. I want you to write down these verses in a notebook. I want you to write on that page. By the Holy Spirit of God, I must learn these verses. This is of the most absolute importance. I don't know how to be any more serious with you. I don't know how to say it any more powerfully. Make them with me and write them down. I am made in my Father's image. I speak life and I speak answers. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Made in the Father's image. He saw darkness. He spoke light. Screen number two. Jesus spoke. Say it out loud. The kingdom of God and healing and answers came. Pause. Jesus stood in front of a gathering of 20,000 people. Filled with sick and diseased people. He saw disease, he spoke the kingdom, and healing, and answers came. Matthew 4, 23. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sicknesses. And all kinds of diseases among the people. Matthew 24, 14. Now look at what this is saying. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached by us in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Say this. 
I must be like Jesus and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus preached it. And that verse 24 and 14 is you and me. Matthew 28, 19. Write these verses down. I'm going slowly enough that you can get it. Jesus sends us in his power to teach the kingdom of God. Verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of that authority of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, Jesus, our sacrifice, and of the Holy Spirit, the power that lives within us, giving you life. Screen next. We are kings and priests. Write it down. I am a king and a priest. Write it down. You got to get this. Jesus, help me teach people to get this. Help us get this, Jesus. From Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood. Thank you. Verse 6. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And ever. Jesus, verse 5, is the ruler of the kings of the earth. You and I are the kings that he's a ruler over. The wicked men don't listen to him and they don't do what he says. Jesus is the king over you and I. You think Putin's doing what God said? No. No, they might be kings, but, and he's the king of it, but they ain't doing what he says. You and I are the ones these two verses are talking about. And he didn't make you a cute Christian. He made you a king and a priest. Get your stuff together. Become excellent in your mind and your spirit and your soul. Bring excellence to every part of your life. Because you're a king and a priest to our God. I see myself as an heir of God. Romans chapter 8 verses 14 to se through 17. As many as are led by the spirit of God. These are sons of God. You were led by God's spirit to be here tonight, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. 15. You did not receive the spirit of bondage, which is run by fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. God, you are my father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That's that inner witness that you get. 
And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. I'm going to pause a minute here. There's a lot of people that say, yeah, but pastor, I, I don't understand the Bible like you. And I, I just can't be like you are. Stop trying. I know this about everybody that's that's listening to me today. Brother Dan's a truck driver. And in order to be effective in that, he learned to read and write and talk and think truck driver. Whether he's got a college degree, doesn't matter. He knows truck driver. Mary Pasterick owned a restaurant. She learned to talk restaurant, food, tables, chairs, napkins, silverware, because it's what she gave herself to. Brother Dave, across the street from me, is a mechanic. He learned to talk wrenches and, and um, cylinder heads and blocks and timing chains and everything it takes to make a car work. The world has taught us, if you don't have a big education, nobody will listen to you. In the kingdom of God, it's not about education. It's about, will you open this book? And just like learning tables and chairs in a restaurant, semi-trucks, trailers, tires, air brakes, just like you learn any other thing you do, sit down with this word. The difference between all of those things and the word of God is you've got the greatest resident teacher on the inside of you. His name is Holy Spirit. Next screen. Speak as royalty. Speak as royalty. Not maybe. Not might be. Not well, I ain't me all right, Pastor, but I just I just don't see myself that way yet. Stop it. Jesus shed his blood so you can become a king and a priest. Let's read this. Where the word of a king is, that's a small king. There is power. And who may say to the king? What are you doing? God made you and I ambassadors, governmental leaders on this kingdom of his, on this earth of his kingdom. And he made us a king and a priest. Oh, get the revelation. Our words coming off of our mouths should be excellent and organized and focused. And shot like an arrow, just like a king's are. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Say it with me. And I am a king. Next one. Write the verse down. As ambassadors, we decree God's plan. You will also decree a thing. And it will be established unto you. You will also decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Let me try that again. You will also decree, decree, declare a thing and it will be established for you. And God's light will shine on your way showing you what path to take not from heaven down on you, from the Holy Ghost inside of you out. The light comes from within, not without. Next screen. I speak life abundantly, not death. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's death. We don't speak those words. I have come, Jesus said. 
I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Job 15, 6. Job, his friend said, your own mouth condemns you, not me. Yes, your own lips testify against you. Why? Because of the words that comes off of your lips. Next screen. Our Father tells us, choose life. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you. That's what Moses said. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And God said, choose life that both you and your descendants may live forever. I have set before you life and life more abundantly. Choose life and live. Now, Mary asked me a question before the program. And um, give me just a second here. She was asking about do I use a concordance? And the answer is yes, Sunday Geyser. God bless you, Sunday Geyser. Welcome. Huh. Isn't that just something? All right. Now, everybody pause for a second. I want you to see something. Well, it's not like you're not paused. I don't know why I keep saying those words, but I just do, so don't worry about it. All right. Give me a second. I'm going to show you something. There it is. I want to show you where I learned to give you a verse list and why I'm so specific about the verses being put into our community of faith. If you don't know this person on the screen, this is Dr. Bill Winston. He pastors a church in Chicago, Illinois. All right, I'm showing you this right now on purpose because I want you to see this. Now, this is an amazing message if you want to listen to the message, but that's not why I'm here. When you go clear to the end, of Dr. Winston's message, At the end of his message, every time he preaches, he makes a verse list. Now, Dr. Bill Winston is an amazing man of God, and he's kicking it. And, and uh, not everybody does this. But I want you to see something tonight. Go with me to the book of Hebrews. Why don't you look at this? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Now, if you want a real good understanding of whatever this message was on Sunday, I, don't, I can't even tell you.
You don't need to go listen to the message. All you got to do is take a screenshot of that right there. And you have every verse that he preached. Count them with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 31, 2, uh, 35, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 40, uh, 4, 47, 49, 50, 51, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 60 verses that he referred to in his message on Sunday. I'm not glorifying Bill Winston. You may not even like him. It doesn't matter to me. I do. Not every preacher does this. The importance of what I'm showing you is the power of that preacher is he knows these verses. You might say, Pastor, how could I ever memorize those verses? Well, when it comes to sitting in a classroom with your English teacher sitting up in front of you, With her long bony finger of condemnation and a ruler. Now you listen to it. You're probably not going to memorize those verses very well. However, please just hear me. Please. I beg of you to hear me. If you'll write these verses in a note, on a piece of paper, in your phone, learn how to copy and paste, and you will do what that man has done, what my pastor, Dr. Mark T. Barclay has done, what I have done to get these verses in my heart like they are, you will be where I am, he is, they are. Look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 10. That you do not become sluggish, but you imitate those. That means be like them. Do what they do. Imitate those. Who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Guys, if you look at your life right now tonight and say, I'm not, this ain't working, this ain't working, this ain't working, this ain't working. I can see in the Bible all that stuff works. It's not working for me. Please don't be offended at me. Open up your Bible. And write down the verses that we, the fivefold ministry, are giving you that teach you how to overcome this, 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 and this, whatever it is. It's not rocket science. It is write the verse down and then you speak it out loud every day. You won't be trying to memorize You'll be proclaiming the word out loud. The, the angels run and work it. It puts life in your body, life on your tongue, life in your eyes, life in your ears, life on the inside of you. And you know what happens? You memorize the verse. And all you had to do was write the verse down on a piece of paper and say, I receive this revelation right now. Not memorization, not a degree, not a Pastor Sam Attaboy. I memorize the word of God. I am going to speak to get this word down deep in my soul and change my mind and cause me to overcome in a way 
that there ain't nobody around me ever even thought I could ever do. And I'm going to tell you about this. I had a class in my church in West Branch, Michigan. And uh, I had a farmer, good friend of mine, wonderful man of God, Cal Greasy. If you're listening tonight, Cal, bless you, brother. Thank you for every seed you've ever sown. And I speak over you continually to this day. 100-fold return of those seeds coming to you. Watch. We had a class. And in the class, we had to read a book. And he said, Pastor, I'm not good at reading books and doing classwork. I said, I know. But you'll do the best. So why do you say that? I said, because when that fire magazine comes, you will read that magazine to the nth degree and learn everything there is about that tractor, that new fertilizer, that new corn seed, that new whatever it is. You will learn that. And you'll read that magazine to the nth degree. And you will understand it and you'll know it. Because it's what affects your life. And you're going to do the same for this class because you want your life to be righteous. Do you know he was the class honor roll person? He was the only member, including me, that read every lesson to the full and did every question every time. Why? Because he realized pastor's not sitting here with a stick saying, if you don't learn this, I am going to whip you with a stick. No, well, that's what our teachers did. We had a teacher who would throw an eraser at us. Bring you up in front of the class and humiliate you and give you a whack with a paddle. If you didn't make a good grade, he humiliated you to cause you to learn more. I'm not doing that. I'll never do that to you. This is the process. Write it down. Hold it. Let me go back there. I, I'm just, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to stay on this thing. I'm going to stay on this thing. I'm going to stay on this thing. And you're going to get it. I'm going to declare it again right now. You're getting this thing. I declare it again right now. You are getting this thing. See, this is what I know. If you took a screenshot of this one page right here, you would never have to even hear that message. Now, it's a good message. Dr. Bill, Dr. Winston's a very excellent, excellent um, Bible scholar and a very excellent teacher, a great man of faith. He's not just talking, he's doing it. Their church is rocking their community. And uh, he went into the most, one of the, the most wicked, corrupt, violent prisons in the nation, Joliet in Illinois, and has business classes in there for the young men so that when they come out, they know who God is and they know who they are. If you never listen to one message, one message of his, but you took this verse list and said, no matter what, I am going to get the revelation of that verse list in my life by reading this word and speaking it out loud daily in my life. There's 60 verses there. Those 60 verses would rock your world forever. Well, Pastor, why why doesn't everybody do what do this right here? Well, um, not everybody is a university instructor like Dr. Winston. Not everybody has a um a, a school. I don't know what he calls it, a university, I guess, Joseph Business School. So he is very, very um instructional minded and in teaching you. Now, why am I showing this to you? Because I want you to go follow Dr. Winston? Because I want you to, to listen to this message? No. Here's a man 
who during COVID, I forget, did $5 million worth of updates to their buildings and, and just totally transformed their building, beautiful building. Paid for it cash. What I talk about, Dr. Bar Barkley, during COVID, not only did they survive, they thrived. And um, I think they're at about three and a half million dollars worth of um, seed sown from the people in the church. And all of it went into making their buildings more beautiful and actually getting things done that Dr. Barclays wanted to do for the last 25 years. They did it during COVID. And in Dr. Barclays community, a flash flood came because the rain was so heavy and took out five dams on one river and totally destroyed over 600 people's homes along that river during COVID. And their church was a headquarter for many of the relief agencies to come and use their parking. This is all during COVID. Why? These people have taken God's word that you see right in front of you and by a daily application of speaking the word of God out loud off a sheet from an organized thought process and not by sitting down, um, Jesus wept, Jesus wept, Jesus wept, Jesus wept. All right, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Go into all the world and preach. No, see, what you're doing is cramming for a test. This isn't cram for a test. This is out loud. Read with your eyes. Hear with your ears. Speak with your mouth. The word goes down in your heart. Fills your heart with his word. And out of that comes life and life more abundantly. Now, I don't know if I can do this. Let me just try. Now. When you see this verse list like this, somebody, there you go, somebody, an employee is making this happen for him. He hands them his notes and somebody in every one of his services has spent the time in their day to make this, this overhead projection and make it look this good, this organized, and this excellent. Believe me, this is what I want in my life. This takes an employee. It's, it's, it's simple. It's time consuming. This is what I want every time. Watch this. This is his message. Reaching the world, living eternal life. Part 21. God can take a person who has failed most of their lives and still... Turn them around. I don't know what's in this message. I, this is my first time looking at it. That's what I teach you every time you come here. God says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. The blood of Jesus is powerful enough to root out all condemnation. How much condemnation did the woman at the well have when Jesus said, go get your husband? What did she do? She looked at Jesus and said, um, um, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, I know. You've had five husbands and the man you're with is not your husband. But see, the blood of Jesus overcomes it. Next. Miracles can get anything back. Your mouth has everything to do with your miracles. I'd take that a lot out if it was me and put everything to do with your miracle. Jesus had a different way of doing miracles each time. Because he was guided by the Holy Spirit. You might be saying, Pastor, I can't write this fast. Take a screenshot. Learn to use your phone. Take a screenshot. 
Now your camera's got it. You can expand it up or you can learn to copy and paste or share the link for this video into your notes, which is an app on your phone. Learn to copy and paste. Do it. Keep going. Oh, I got to see if I can move this. Well, I know what to do. I'm just going to let this play and it'll advance to the next screen. Screen two. Satan could never track Jesus. I can hear it. Well, but you know, the devil's all powerful. No, he's not. Satan showed up at Jesus in the world and said, are you the son of God? And then it says, Jesus so crushed him with the word that the enemy left him for a whole season, four months. Three months, sorry about that. Keep going, I gotta keep going. My goodness. God is about to give you thoughts you have never thought before. People don't see miracles because they're trying to do it their own way. You have to listen to the voice of God. The enemy tries to keep you waiting. A miracle doesn't need time. Miracles are outside of time. The man standing in front of Jesus was blind. That's one of them verses, I'm sure. What did Jesus do? He took the mud, put it on his eyes, and he saw. Another man, he spit in the guy's eyes. For us to do what God has for us to do in this time, we have to get our thoughts from God. Though it sounds good, see if the thought is from God or the spirit of religion by cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting bringing confusion. Watch. Miracles are the supernatural acts of God that override the natural law of time, space, and matter. I can hear somebody saying, I can't write fast enough, Pastor. Take a screenshot. Learn how to use your phone. Take a screenshot. It's usually the power button. And another button will take a screenshot of what is on that face of that camera, that phone. And now it's in your pictures and you can sit there and look at it when it's done. You can also go back and find this again. This is the 7 a.m. service for 22 May 22. Watch. Read it. Miracles come by a spiritual process and you have to receive them by faith. When you listen to God, you will break bad habits. You will break ineffective habits. You will break time-wasting habits. You will create a new habit of saying, I can master this day. I, I'm telling you, tonight, guys, after Phyllis said what she said, after we experienced what we have this weekend, I mean, we worked hard. We worked eight hours for that money that guy stole.
It is the way of this day. Because they can use this app against itself. And you and I got to be, we got to become extremely diligent and say, wait a minute. I will no longer say, I'm just an old guy and I don't care about this world. You got to care. Because the wicked of this world do not care. I don't want to see people I know crashing and burning. I don't want to see it. Don't look for the instruction to make sense. Look for it to make faith. Miracles give you mastery. When you, as you and I learn to create a miracle, we master time, space, and matter. And you become a master. You become a king, a priest, an ambassador, an heir of God, those who are sent by God to tend and keep this earth. No more violent tornadoes. No more. Stop them. Don't, don't send them over to the next city. Command that storm to cease. Pastor, I tried that and it didn't. I know. You got to get the word out. You got to get serious and learn how to use this word. So that the devil stops tearing up your life, your family, your kids, your grandkids, your community, your state, and this nation. There is a miracle in your mouth. It is never too late for a miracle. Whoops, I hit the wrong button here. And they got good music. And we're back to the screen of all of his verses. Now, why did I go here tonight? I'm not trying to get you to go follow Dr. Bill Winston. You may not like Chicago style, Bill Winston style, praise and worship style. You might not like that, but that's just a, that's just your preference and theirs. That's where you live and where they do. It's all right. The point of this whole thing that I'm showing you tonight is this. Yeah. Amen. Felicia, I just now saw your comment. Thank you, Felicia, for writing that prayer. Yeah. What, what is the purpose of what I'm saying? Hear it, write it, speak it, and you transform your life. There's just no other way. Go with me. I want to grab, I want to grab um, about five more verses. Um. What was that verse you gave me, Dan? Matthew eleven twelve. Matthew eleven twelve. There's a lot of people that be like, I've had since I've been here doing this. I've had a lot of people say, Pastor, you're just too serious about this. You got to quit binding and loosening and speaking that things fall apart. No, I don't. Did you hear? Read the word for today. The same violent warrior David was in the natural in the Old Testament. You and I have to be in the New Testament. They did it in the natural. We do it in the supernatural. And yes, people will lose their jobs. Yes, people will lose their lives. Yes, people will quit businesses and jobs. They will run and hide. That's what the Bible says. 
Peter looked at the man in church one night and said to Simon, the sorcerer, who had been born again, said, you and your money perish and go to hell. Simon, the sorcerer, said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't, don't say what you just said. Why? Because Simon the sorcerer saw that what Peter said came to pass. And, it, and he's like, wait a minute. I don't want nothing that you just said to come upon me. I'm going to go to that verse. I wasn't even going to go there. This isn't it, but I'm, I'm just going to read this one. Um, go with me to Acts 13. We'll get to Matthew in just a second. Stay as long as you can stay. Somebody make a verse list, please. That's why it's so important. Let me, let me pause for a minute. I need you guys to see something. About two months ago, I gave you a verse list financial verses to speak and sister Leanne and I ask you if you would say these verses with us every day and go to war in the heavenlies with us because of the, the financial opposition coming at us and that's why she's out tonight doing this and that's why I go out when I'm not here I go out and get the car and drive because we've got to break through this power of this Lack. I don't need you to send me all your money. I'm not begging for an offering. You and I have got to get the blessing of God that's designed for our life where we suffer no lack and our lives are filled with abundance. We got to get that in our hands because every single one of us should have more than enough in our own lives to take care of everything. And there's only one reason it's not there is we don't understand this word. Watch this verse. Acts chapter 13, verse 6 through 12. When they'd gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. The word proconsul there is like a governor. Uh, a high-level judge, governor type person. Verse 8, Elymas the sorcerer, his name is translated, withstood them speaking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. This demonic person was sent by the devil into that place to stop that man from receiving Jesus. Why? Because if that proconsul received Jesus and faith, he transformed the whole region into knowing God. So the enemy... It's trying to beat God to the punch and gets a sorcerer in front of his name, a man of witchcraft. Yes, they're in your community. Yes. They're diligently believing that if they speak specific words in the realm of the spirit, those words will come to pass. The devil believes what I'm teaching you. It's Christians that don't. Oh, I just know God's helping you get this. Keep reading. Nine, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him, standing in front of the great political leader and said, you full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, Will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Verse 11. And now, indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. Immediately, a dark mist fell on him. 
And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. The proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Pastor, are you telling me to curse people to hell or something? No. No. What I'm telling you is there is a place you and I've got to get in the realm of the spirit by the word of God where we're doing what we just saw Paul do in the realm of the spirit to every enemy force that is around us. Pastor, I don't know who you think you are. Well, I know. I don't think. I know who I am. I am a child of God. I am an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. I am a minister of reconciliation. I am a king and a priest unto my God. And that gives me the authority to do what God told Adam and Eve in the garden, tend and keep this earth. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, take dominion. That's who I am. That's who you am. But if you don't get this mouth opening up and being organized in a thought process and saying, the God that lives in me will help me be organized like I need to be organized, no matter how Pastor Sam is organized. And that's just wicked. Sitting right here right now, that thing just took over my messenger. That's just wicked. Ah, where was I going? Matthew eleven twelve. Look at this. Matthew eleven twelve. Let's read eleven and twelve. Ah, uh, through fifteen. Eleven through fifteen. Surely I say to you, among those born of wisdom, women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus just said you're going to be a greater than John the Baptist. You don't have to be a scholar to read that and see it. Read what's in this Bible and tell everything else in your life to shut up and match the word of God. You are going to be greater than John the Baptist. Why, pastor? That's just heretical. Heretical. No, it's not. I'm reading the words from Jesus. And from the days of John the Baptist, read this. Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. For all the law and the prophets prophesied until John. If you are willing to receive it, he's Elijah. Who is to come? He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. That means you take your ears and you put this word inside them ears by letting your mouth, by making your mouth speak this word out loud. It's the only way. When you first come in the kingdom, everybody else is going to use their faith to help you make it. But there comes a point in the kingdom where you have to put away the childish things of letting everybody else win the battles for you. And you got to start winning the battle yourself. I know. 
I know. I know. Where is that verse? First Corinthians. Oh, yeah. 13, 11. I think it's very interesting that Sister Leanne and I fought this battle this weekend. We win. We're tithers. They can't beat us. We love God. We walk with God. We stay in the word. He can't beat us. But it, even in the middle of it, we still got to fight the battle and win. Sister Phyllis, I mean, we lost 250 bucks. I mean, Sister Phyllis's granddaughter lost $2,000. Isn't that what you said, Phyllis? But see, what we're learning is not about how many different people are losing money, although that what, what this is showing us is that, go ahead. What this is showing us is that in this day that we live, there are a group of people who literally live their life stealing from other people. Literally. They live their life by stealing from other people. Well, pastor, they shouldn't do that. Guess what? They're billionaires. They ain't going to listen to a word you say. Unless you taking the word off of this page and hurling it down through the prince of the, the, the supernatural realm taking authority. First Corinthians 11, uh, 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. There came a point in your life and mine when you said, I'll no longer live at my mom and dad's house. I'm going to live on my own. I'm going to learn how to pay my bills. I'm going to learn how to have a job. I'm going to learn how to have money. I'm going to learn how to have a bank account. I'm going to own a car. I'm going to have an address. And what did you do? You put away the childish things that caused you to stay stuck in your mom and dad's house. And you became a man or a woman. You took accountability of your own actions to become what it was going to take to live in this life. Well, Spiritually is no different. I just showed you from one of the great men of God of our day. And let me say, I want to say something about Dr. Barkley, because I'd like to show you the same thing from Dr. Barkley. But I want to, I, I want to en enlist you guys prayer for Dr. Barkley. Because he literally has a group of people that are following him. Just like this situation with the Apostle Paul. And they find his itinerary and they send letters to the people calling him a heretic. So every church where he's going right now, they're going to get a letter in the mail saying, this man's a heretic. So when you go to, when you go to his YouTube program, you can't even make a comment there. Because Christians don't make comments. These wicked people who feign themselves as Christians fill his comments so much, he can't even let the comments be on. Why? Because they're that perverse. They're doing it in the name of God. They are literally spending their whole life and all their energy to uh, destroy the work that he is doing, literally. Now, I, I don't get it, but I ask you to pray for him. I ask you, like, like the Apostle Paul, silence their mouth. 
You can't go around declaring that people are going to go blind. That's not your place. Unless, of course, God says for you to say that. That's a very severe situation. Guys, you and I are going to have to get very serious about this. Because these, these wicked people are going to take advantage of the poor. Uh, of the weak in this world. Go with me to Psalm 99. No, Psalm 109. This is for tomorrow's Read the Word. Those, those of you that have been following me doing the Read the Word live after the program, I've got to I've got to stop that process for this period of time because I it's I'm staying up too late. I'm not getting enough sleep. And I'm ending out, I'm ending up just worn out. So I'm recording the Read the Words um, earlier in the day. And uh, I encourage you, just help me get that word out of Read the Words. Share it with everybody. It's a powerful, powerful process that will really, really change people's lives. It really will. Anyways, Psalm 109. Oh, my goodness. Look what time it is. Well, Lord. Let's go to verse 26 through 29. We'll have to come back to this. This is war. You, we are in all-out combat. And we've got to become the violent warriors who take it by force. And, as a precious prize. Um, Brother Dan, I don't know if, if you can copy and paste um, Matthew 11, 12 from the Amplified. Copy and paste that in there. I don't, if you can, that's fine. If you can't, don't worry about it. I'll get it in a minute. There we go. Verse 26. Psalm 109, 26. Help me, O Lord, my God. That's where I'm at today. Save me according to your mercy. That they may know that this is your hand. That you, Lord, have done this to them. Let them... Curse, but you bless. When they arise, let them be ashamed. But let your servant rejoice. Let my accusers be clothed with shame. And let them cover themselves with their own disgraces as with a mantle. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because these wicked people... The person that they're hurting the most is the senior citizens who don't know how to use this technology. And what are they doing? They're taking advantage of them. And they're emptying their accounts every day and leaving them in abject poverty. And they tell them, you owe this bill and you owe it right now. And if you don't do this, you're going to be shut down. And you're not going to have this opportunity. And they get full of fear. And they ask a couple questions. And the person becomes so convincing that they, they pay outrageous amounts of money. It's like Brother Roger, because he's a Vietnam vet the other day. They told him he owed $30,000 in, in student loans. And badgered him to pay it. No, you and I got to become wise as serpents and we got to be gentle and, and helpful to people, but it's high time that we become just like Jesus.
Where am I at? Dan Matthew 11, 12. Everybody just pause for a minute. Uh, it's a good question. That's a good question. And, and here, here's the thing about this. For the rest of our time on this earth, this is the number one lesson that we're going to have to teach every new person that gets in here. I'm going to send some of them to you guys. I need you to get this. So that I can send them to you and you say, this is what pastor's teaching. Here's 10 messages that teach it. Study this series. That's why I keep saying I need timestamps and I need this editing done. I, there's only so many hours in the day. And, and I've got to do the study and the diligence for the future. But I can't let this stuff all go. And that means God's got people right now standing around us that will help us do it. Brother Michael, uh, Francetta's grandson, is really excellent at this. Wow, Richard Winslow and Marianne Mario McDonald. Welcome, guys. That's good. Welcome. Good to have you with us. That's why I keep asking you for your help because uh, there's only so many hours in the day. And there's only so much one person can do. It's not difficult. It's just time to me. Thank you, Dan. From the days of John the Baptist. Until the until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault. Violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. Um, maybe I told you the wrong translation. Anyways, the, there's another one that says, uh, receive it as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. I wonder what translation that was. Help me, Jesus. Everybody pause. I'm going to find this. I want you to be able to see this. Oh, it's the classic, Dan. Thank you. Thank you for your help, brother. I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. Thank every one of you for your help. All right. There you go. There. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault. I just had to get, Dan had to help me get focused. Then I got it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. <laughs> An N1 share. Now, I don't know what an N1 share is, but uh, hey, it 
must be valuable. Buy some. Buy all you can buy before midnight. Sell it in the morning. Maybe you'll make a lot. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. What is the violence? We're not going to go to heaven and shake our fist at God and say, give me this up in my... No. No. Our violence is against the enemy that's trying to keep it from us. We've got to drive back the enemy. And we've got to become violent. A violent force on the inside of driving out everything that doesn't absolutely match the word of God in our life. And then find our place where God the Father has planted us and get in there and let our gift come alive. Like right here, you guys helping me. Let your gift come alive in this place and help us get this work accomplished. Why did God send you here? Don't know. Why did he send me here? I didn't want to do this. At all. Didn't want to do this at all. Matter of fact, on Judgment Day, I'm sure I'm going to suffer loss. Because he talked to me about this a long time ago. Had people in my life telling me, you should do this. It's you. You would be a natural. I'm like, I don't want nothing to do with that. So on that day... On that day in eternity, I will suffer loss. I'll have works that will be tried. And they, I'll suffer loss. But you can't focus on that. You got to say, thank God for mercy and grace. Thank God for this mission that we have here. Thank God that we have a ministry that he's given us to do. Well, We'll end with one final verse. Got to end on a triumphant note. Second Thessalonians 2. Six through eight. I don't know that I've ever done it in the Amplified, but I'm since I'm here, might as well do it. It's in the Facebook, it's in YouTube, or it's in um, Zoom. I can't put it in YouTube. There's too many words, but. 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 through 8. Now you know what is restraining him. Who's the him? Antichrist. P from being revealed at this time. It's a demonic spirit, guys. Anti-Christ. It is against Jesus. It is so that he, the Antichrist, may be manifested, revealed in his own appointed time. That's about ready to happen. Verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness. What's lawlessness? That hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority. It's people who continually re rebel against authority. Is already at work in the world. But it is restrained only until. Here's N1. See, buy that N1. Until he who restrains is taken out of the way. Want to say it with me? I not only have a restraining order. I am the restraining order. You are. You are. I beg of you. Please. Please hear this. If you don't, if you're not hearing me and it doesn't make any sense, then get a hold of me privately. 
where I can talk very personal to your life and say this. Because we have to win. And Jesus said, if you don't understand it, the devil will come and take this seed out of your heart. And then you'll have no harvest. God's whole kingdom is seed time and harvest. If you're still fighting that one, got to get over it. In order to receive a harvest, you got to plant a seed. In order to receive an abundance, you got to first put in abundantly. In order to have, you have to do. In order to receive, you have to give. In order to grow, you have to sow the word in your heart so that you can grow abundantly in Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. And I know that tonight made a difference. I really do. There's a lot of things in this night. Pray for, no, wait. Keep speaking the words of faith over Phyllis's granddaughter that she gets her 2,000 back. A while ago, we prayed for Roger. They, they were taking his inheritance. We, we have to see the will of God come to pass in people's lives. Because that's our place in this kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Coffee's done. We got to pray. Father. In the name of Jesus. Wow. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. That lives inside of us. Our resident teacher. Helping us. From the inside. Out. Yeah. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we receive your instruction and your guidance in our life right now. I declare that every one of these the believers here with us. Rise up tonight. And, and this revelation of write the verse down. Speak it out loud. Write the verse down in an intellectual order for your mind. And speak it out loud. Every day. All day long. Every day. All day long. Jesus. I declare that these people see this. All of our partners blessed abundantly to be with us. All of those that deception or confusion is trying to drive them away or keep them from us. No, I bind you deception. No weapon formed against this ministry can prosper. Every tongue that's risen against this ministry, we condemn it. We command you to lose your grip. And we say, Come, help us do the work of the kingdom of God in Jesus' mighty name. 19 seconds. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray. Amen. Help us to get beyond the place where our enemy has any ability to stop the work no, he can't. We know he cannot stop the work. But help us, help us get this word so deep in our life, so deep, so deep that there is nothing 
that stops this mighty moving force. And 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 this gathering of believers, this this ecclesia, this body of Christ, this governing body of authority that you have made us into. We will always be that healing room where we drive off the enemy force in our lives and anybody else that shows them. And we conquer in this world in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, let's receive our communion elements tonight. And um, we will... Uh, Huh. Isn't that something? Well, First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. Wow. Right while we sit here looking. Right while we sit here looking. Thank you, Lord. There we go. Got our communion elements ready. For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. When he blessed it, he broke it. And he said, take Eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same manner after supper, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28, let a man examine himself. This is the process. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Why? Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. I love that verse. First John chapter four, verse 17. And here's the next verse on judgment. Love has been perfected among us in this. That we might have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. So are we in this world. Perfect love. Cast out fear. And the torments that go with it. Because there is no fear. And God's perfect Love. There's no fear. And Jesus mighty name. This is our process. Those of you that are listening to us right now tonight. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. If you've never been born again. If you've never been reconciled with the Father. If you've never had brought your spirit to life. You know, people use all kinds of terminology for it. This is that prayer. And if you pray this prayer with me, mean it with the depths of your heart. In the next 60 seconds, you'll be right with God. And your sins will be taken care of. Pray it with me. If you guys that are online want to pray it with me, you're welcome to do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Father, in the name of Jesus. I know I need you in my life every day. I know. And according to John 316. And according to John 316. When I believe in you. When I believe in you. You give me everlasting life. You give me everlasting life. And I will not perish. And I will not And perish. I thank you for it. And I thank you. Put your hands out and said, Jesus, I receive you into my life. All of your love. All of your mercy. All of your grace. All of your All of your righteousness. All of your righteousness. Filling every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Now, those of you that are with us, you might say, Pastor, well, I'm sure you are saying it because I know what goes on in my life every time I say it. Um, I, it's, transform, it's transforming. It's going on in the inside. You just ask Jesus the Christ to come live within you. You just ask the author and finisher of faith to come to live in you. You just ask the light of the world to come live in you. You said all of your grace, mercy, love, and righteousness come and live in you. Isn't that amazing? And all of it did. Jesus said he's more willing to give to you than you even are to ask. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro across this earth. Looking for those whose heart will be perfect toward him and that are seeking that he may show himself strong in your behalf. Before you ever even pray, he's already put the answer on the way. And tonight, you've been reconciled with the Father. Your sins are placed in remission. We're going to speak it in just a minute. And this transfa transformation has happened. You're now heir of God. Join heir with Jesus. It's exactly what we've been teaching tonight. Get this teaching out. I might sound a little intense in this teaching. And it's not intense or angry. It's just intensity from we have got to see the reality. The depths of what's going on in this area. Deception will be rampant. And many people will fall to it. And I don't want it to be you. In Jesus, my name. Ready? The website and the email address is right down there in the notes. You can find that. Send me an email. Say, Pastor, I prayed the prayer tonight. Help me walk with God. And I'll help you. I truly will. All of us here will. If you're a female, my wife will help you. These ladies will help you. And we'll go to the next level in God. Ready? Let's receive our elements together. Get you some grape juice, cracker, a piece of bread. Get you some bread and water. Jesus turned the water into wine. According to Jesus' example, it was the fruit of the vine, grape juice. It was bread, the unleavened bread. And that's what I like to use. I know some people say it's not important, but the more excellent we become, the more God's blessing is in our life. Pray this with me over the elements. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. And sanctify them in Jesus' mighty name. 
and sanctify them in Jesus' name. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgressions. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. My iniquity. The chastisement for my peace. The chastisement for my peace. Is upon you, Lord. Is upon you, Lord. And by your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplied. Every joint supplied. In my body. In my body. From your broken body, Jesus. From your broken body, And the body of Christ in my community. And the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive his broken body together. And now we lift up the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus. Say it with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin has been placed in remission. Every sin has been placed in remission. Amen. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. All things have become new. And I thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly. To the throne room of grace. To the throne room of grace. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Mercy and help. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague has to pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. And I will always be the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Now let's receive this communion together. Well, for those of you that Enjoy violin music. Sister Mary Pastorix has violin music playing tonight in the background for communion. It's rather appropriate. <laughs> hey. Happens to be gun smoke. <laughs> ah, thank God for gun smoke. That's good. Cool. Back in the day when a fella could really deal with a problem. Anyways, glory be to God. 
Let's let's sing our song. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Because you first love me oh how i love you jesus oh how i love you jesus oh how i love you jesus because you first love me. Well, guys, it's already 15 minutes after 11 in the Eastern time zone. 15 after 10 here. So I, I can stay on here and talk to you all night, but I need to let you go. Um, if you want to study that message by Dr. Bill Winston, I'm sure it's a good one. You can find that on YouTube. It's his Sunday morning message. Um, it is a Chicago uh, 2022 ministry. So they got some serious praise and worship. They got some serious cutting edge. Everything they do is cutting edge. And um, I encourage you, just open up your heart and mind. Say, well, it might not be my kind of music, but glory be to God. They sure seem to be worshiping him. And thank God there's some kind of worship and praise for everybody. And um, most of all, most of all, get this. This is why we have a verse list. This is why we put the verses in. So you can write them down and begin to build a verse list that ministers to you. And then speak it until it gets down deep inside of your heart and controls Every part of your life, your heart, your mind, and your mouth, especially your mouth, because that's what's got to be controlled. Like like um, Job's friend says, I'm not condemning you. Your own, mouth, your own mouth is condemning you. I saw that verse the other day. I'm like, check that one out in Jesus' mighty name. Well, YouTube, we call you blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Thanks for being with us. Share this with everybody out there. And until we see you again, this is what we say. Wait a minute. I'm just, I'm being focused. Not yet. Sister Phyllis, read your verses. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Jude 20 through 25. Jude 20 through 25. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen. amen. And now, my last verse for tonight, and I'm, I'm going to say this until Jesus comes. And that is Mark chapter 10, verses 29 and 30. Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, everyone who has left house or brother, sister, father, mother, wife or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels, they will receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses. That's a plural word. And brothers and sisters and mothers and children and land 
with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Now, what is it saying? You help me do this work of the kingdom tonight. And Jesus said, there's a hundredfold return that's coming to you. Now, in this lifetime, a hundredfold return. And so I encourage you tonight to just put your hands out and um, just lift them up to heaven and just say it. I receive the hundredfold return that you have for me on this earth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen, and amen, and amen. And now, the work is done. So, YouTube, we love you. Call you blessed in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow for another exciting day right here in the community of faith.